In the new film Logan, Wolverine encounters a female Wolverine named X-23. And to celebrate this, I thought I would go through the original origin of the character X-23. Now, the film will undoubtedly feature a reimagining of X-23, but the original X-23 story can be found in the miniseries X-23, and this origin is based on that miniseries and no other media. X-23's story actually starts several years before her birth, with Wolverine breaking free of the Weapon X facility. The Weapon X facility is where the indestructible metal adamantium was coated over his bones and claws. Wolverine is in what appears to be a berserker rage, which is the term given for when Wolverine loses all higher brain function and goes kill crazy. And he has done just that and killed everyone in the Weapon X facility. And he finishes by killing Dr. Dale Rice, whom is attempting to get a sample of Wolverine's DNA out of the facility, as well as saving his own life, of course. He fails in saving himself, but the DNA sample remains undestroyed, though is partially corrupted. Fast forward to many years later, and Dr. Rice's son, Xander Rice, has become a scientist himself, and is a high up member of the current Weapon X program, and he is attempting to recreate his father's work and graft adamantium onto another person's skeleton in an attempt to create the ultimate weapon. He is trying and failing to do this, as all his subjects are dying during the bonding process. Because of this, the head of the department decides to bring in a new scientist to take a different approach. This new scientist is Dr. Kinney, and her new direction is to take the sample taken from Weapon X, meaning Wolverine's DNA, and clone Wolverine to make a copy of him with the same healing factor, so that the clone can then have adamantium grafted onto their skeleton and become the ultimate weapon and be a hired assassin working for Weapon X. Dr. Rice is unhappy about this, as he feels Dr. Kinney is stealing the project away from him, and so he hates Dr. Kinney. But he has no say, and Dr. Kinney sets about creating a viable embryo for the cloning process. She attempts this, and like Dr. Rice, she too fails. This is because the DNA sample is too corrupted on the Y chromosome. However, the X chromosome is still in good working condition. Now, for those who already don't know, human chromosomes come in two different ways, either XX for female or XY for male. This is because all babies are born as an X, then decide to become XX or XY which means all men and women are born as women, and then they decide to either stay female or to become male. This is also why men have nipples, a throwover from our brief time as females. But anyway, because of this, Dr. Kinney comes up with a new plan. Since the Y chromosome is too corrupted, she can use the X chromosome and duplicate it to make a clone of Wolverine with the same healing factor, except that the Wolverine would be female instead of male. And the people in charge say, hell no, to this idea. They want an assassin, not a Barbie doll bit sexist of them, but they are evil mad cloning scientists, so what do you expect? Dr. Kinney decides this is stupid, as it is their best shot at making a clone. But she pretends to work on the male Wolverine cloning project like normal, but is secretly working on cloning a female Wolverine. And she fails. But I failed, time and time again. 22 times to be precise. 23 was the charm once we realized where to look for the answer she manages to create a viable embryo, so she goes back to her bosses and gives them the option again. They are not happy that she disobeyed them, but when she points out that she can make a female clone now, or a male clone in six to 10 years time, they decide to give the female clone a go ahead. Unfortunately, they don't have a surrogate host mother ready for the embryo, as the cloning process wasn't scheduled to be ready yet. So Dr. Rice tells Dr. Kinney that she'll have to be the surrogate mother herself, or her project of a female Wolverine won't last the night. So Dr. Kinney becomes X-23's mother, both as the one who had the brains to create her and as the person who grew in her belly. And nine months later, X-23 is born. X-23 is then raised to be the perfect killer, conditioned, beaten, trained, and in many respects, tortured. She excels in all of her training and grows into a well-trained and obedient assassin. The only problem is that she can't undergo the adamantium bonding process until a healing factor kicks in, as she wouldn't survive the process otherwise. So, Dr. Rice starts to subject her to extreme levels of physical duress, which is a nice fancy way of saying he tortured the hell out of her. Unfortunately, all his attempts failed, until eventually, after subjecting X-23 to lethal amounts of radiation poisoning, her healing factor activates itself in order to save her life. And the adamantium bonding surgery can be performed. They put her through the Weapon X process. Unlike Wolverine, who had his entire skeleton coated in adamantium, X-23 only has her claws coated in the metal. 
Her claws are slightly different than Wolverine's, whereas he has three claws that pop out of each of his arms, X-23 has two claws that pop out of each of her arms, and one claw that pops out of each of her feet. So the same number of claws just spread about a little. And in my opinion, that is a much better way of doing it, as she has four deadly limbs instead of just two. and it allows for different fighting styles. In fact, X-23 once cut out both of the Hulk's eyes using her feet claws, while he was mocking her for only having two in each of her arms. But anyway, after the metal grafting, her extensive training program of fighting styles continued, but now more vigorously, as some of the training that they wanted to subject her to, she was unable to do without her claws coated in metal and without the healing factor to help her survive. But now that she has it, they can subject her to serious training that is incredibly lethal to anyone without a healing factor. They also continue her conditioning to make her both obedient and to remove all emotion, so that she will kill any target without remorse. We trained her how to blend in naturally with others. But when she watched children having fun, witnessed loving families, unexpected hostilities emerged. The facility also created a trigger scent and conditioned X-23 to go into a murderous rage, much like Wolverine's Berserker rage, whenever she smelt the trigger scent, which makes her kill anything and everything she comes in contact with, with no self-control, and after the scent wears off, she has no memory of what she has done. To test this trigger scent, they mark her sensei, whom she loves like a grandfather, with the scent and watch as she murders the closest thing she has to family. After all these things were done to her, the facility's head decided that she was ready and they set about putting X-23 to work as an assassin that kills anyone who is untouchable. To prove her worth and provide advertising for hiring X-23, the Weapon X facility had her murder a US presidential candidate and everyone else at his press conference, including his family. They were not hired to do this and had no grudge against the candidate. They killed him merely to show they could kill anyone, even the most highly protected and untouchable of targets and X-23 infiltrated the press conference and killed everybody with ease. And afterwards, she killed untouchable men and women all around the world, never failing in her task and always killing them within any set time period and following any given restrictions, such as making it look like an accident. One thing that needs to be noted is that Xander Rice, one of the heads of the project and the one who grafted the adamantium onto X-23's bones, hates X-23. This was because he hated Wolverine for killing his father, the man who had gotten the DNA sample out of the original Weapon X facility. And since he couldn't get revenge on Wolverine, he instead got revenge on his clone, ignoring the fact that X-23 hadn't killed his father and that Wolverine had only done it because they were experimenting and essentially torturing him and it had sent him crazy. Now during her childhood, her mother, Dr. Kinney, didn't really care about her at first. This was because she did not like people and had alienated herself due to being molested by her father and then when she told the rest of her family about this, they didn't believe her until years later when it was proven to be true. This had scarred her and led to her leaving an isolated life. But as she'd had the child grow inside her and then watched her grow up and all the horrors she was being subjected to, she felt more and more towards X-23 and gradually grew to love the child and wanted to save her from the life that she had actually helped inflict upon her. Meanwhile, Dr. Rice had hatched a plan to kill the Weapon X's director and take his place which he did, using X-23 to kill the director and his family. He had always hated Dr. Kinney because he had always seen her as stealing the project away from him, and now that he was in charge, he immediately fired her, letting her know that he would have her shot if she wasn't gone by morning. He also told her now that he was in charge, they were going to mass-produce Wolverine clones, and instead of hire them out, they were going to sell the clones to the highest bidder. Basically, I found him on ice at a Weapon X facility. It turned out to be pretty useful. And a little aggressive. But this certainly explains why every sentinel outside is shredded to pieces. Dr. Kinney couldn't let this happen, and so she decided she had to destroy the new clones that were being created and get X-23 out of the facility that night. And she succeeded. The clones were destroyed and X-23 got out safely after killing Xander Rice, the now head of Weapon X program and the man who had tortured X-23 her entire life. Unfortunately, before this, Dr. Rice had managed to apply a dose of X-23's trigger scent onto Dr. Kinney. And so when X-23 exited the Weapon X facility to meet her mother, she smelt this and went into a mindless rage and stabbed her own mother to death. Once the scent had worn off, X-23 came around long enough to hear her mother say that she loved her before she died. 
X-23 laid with her mother in the snow crying for a long time after this, until eventually leaving when more men from the facility came looking for her and she was forced to flee. She travelled around being hunted by the remnants of the Weapon X program for a long time, until tracking down Wolverine. At first, she tried to kill him as she blamed him for her having been created in the first place. This is your fault! <laughs> Everything I am is because of you! <laughs> You're mixed up! I didn't know anything about this! You're lying! <laughs> but eventually, she came around and realised that she wasn't angry at him, she was just angry. Angry at the Weapon X staff who had beaten and tortured her since she was born. And I imagine in the Logan movie, this is roughly where X-23 is going to be introduced to Wolverine. So hopefully this origin will help you to enjoy the film a bit more as you know her background. However, in the comics, her life gets a little more convoluted at this point, but eventually she winds up joining the X-Men for many years. She leaves and then later returns to the X-Men a few times for personal reasons. These personal reasons seem to be dependent on what the sales from the other comic books that she features in are, and when these comics reach the end of their line, she inevitably returns to the X-Men mainly because she's just such an interesting character and it's just a bit pointless to end her being in the comics. She's also quite commercially successful, of course. And if you haven't already, I do recommend reading the two X-23 miniseries. They are nothing short of brilliant. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said of the comic book series that X-23 was in solo, which was named X-23. It's not that bad, but it's also not that good either. And it's just not in the same league as the first two miniseries. Please let us know in the comments what you think of X-23, along with what you think the movie will end up doing with her character. And if you're watching this in the future and the film is already out, then let us know what you thought of what they did with X-23's character compared to her true comic origin. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment. Laura, take the others and go release the prisoners.